welcome to another Tonic Craft Kit unboxing video. Today's one is for kit number 51, which is called the Sweetheart Bouquet. And you'll be happy to know, some of you, that it's not another box die this month. It's actually some gorgeous kind of um, A2-ish sized panels. I, I didn't actually measure, but I think maybe they're slightly bigger because it's actually got a scalloped edge, but you'll see that when I show you the dies. Um, but there's some gorgeous panels that can create quick um, and easy... Uh, clean and simple kind of cards you know with just sort of one cut and then adding your sentiment however you want to or you can make them a bit more elaborate and use all of the gorgeous nouveau that's in the kit um, or you can turn them into shaker cards as well they work really nicely as shaker cards so let's have a look at what's in this month's kit so it's been uh, three months since the last binder so we've got another binder to keep our kits in and they do give them so you store three in them so you I suppose you get them every fourth month do you because they you store three in them but anyway um they are supposed to fit three although you can fit four in them so if you have missed out on a folder at some point um you can still fit four in a binder as well um, and they're just like a standard two ring a5 little binder that fit perfectly the uh, cardboard folders that you get your stamps and dies in for your kits and they also fit in like the designer's choice the stamp clubs and also any of the a5 format showcases or special um one-off kind of stamp and die sets that they do for um, special occasions like the Cyber Week recently or their birthday previous in the year as well. So um, they're really great folders for storing any bits and pieces in, whether you get lots of the kits or whether you just sort of randomly buy the kit and get a folder, you can store other bits and pieces in them as well. So that is the binder that we're getting in this month's kit. Then um, let's tip out the bag of Nouveau goodies. And I'll save that just in case I want to use it. Although last month is still sitting on my desk and I haven't used it again yet. Uh, but they're there when I want them. So we have got some gorgeous Nouveau in here. And I'm pretty sure there is an exclusive item as well. Those of you who love your confetti might have already noticed that you haven't seen that before. But let's first look at this um, 6x6 card pack. So this is the Silver Service Mixed Card Pack. Um, I think these are usually 5 99 each. So it's a pretty decent... Um, you know, extra item to have in your kit as well. And I really love these because they have got lots of different finishes of the same colour. They did also, I don't think they did it for this year's colour trends, but I think this was the previous year, they brought out um, like a card pack with the colour trend that had like, um, you know, the, the mix of colours for that colour trend rather than just one single colour in the different types of cardstock. But they're really useful, these kind of pads, to have on your desk to... Um, you know when you're sort of, I don't know, quickly making cards and you just need a little bit of mirror card but it's, you know, it's too much effort to go over to where you store your mirror card and find the card you're looking for. But having something like this on your desk, you know, you've always got um, different colours ready there for you in these kind of pads. So I do find these really, really useful. And in this silver service pad, you have Hollow Waves, which is the gorgeous rainbow iridescent finish mirror card. So you can see there the camera really picks up the rainbow more than you do in real life. So it's not actually that garish in real life. It's much more subtle rainbow. Then we also have a pearlescent card. We've got the lunar silver. And just like when you buy this in A5, uh, sorry, A4 packets, um, it's double sided as well. So you've got both sides of the gorgeous silver. Then we also get the silver screen glitter card, uh, which the glitter cards, I mean... I think usually if you bought a pack of five sheets of A4 pieces of glitter card, it would be the same price as this entire pad. I mean, I know you're only getting six by six sheets rather than A4, but you tend to use glitter card in smaller applications so that it's not too overwhelming on a card. So getting a few of these six by six pads um, in the different colour variations, you'll have a glitter card for most of those colours. Um, and I really do like having, um, you know, a bit of glitter card on hand. And it's a cheaper way than uh, buying full packs of glitter card as well if you know you only use small pieces. Just as a point of reference, if you ever want to get hold of any of these little 6x6 pads, I know they've got them on the website at the moment because I've seen them on there. Um, and you might have even got them in the um, Cyber Week sales. They had a really good bundle in the Cyber Week sales, so if you did get them, um, you know, you'll have a lovely selection of bits and pieces to go on your desk as well. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. And then the last one that's on here... Um, it says it's the Silver Strokes Foiled Craft Card. However, when you buy the Silver Strokes Foiled Craft Card, 
um, I think it came out in the merry and bright colour trend, I think. Um, but when you buy this in an A4 pack, it's grey craft card with silver foiling. But in this little 6x6 pad, it's brown craft card with the silver foiling. So uh, you've actually got a different one. It's not actually the silver strokes card that it says on the front. Um, so you've got a lovely different extra. And the great thing about craft card actually is stamping in white on craft card looks really nice so you can actually bring in some of your sentiment stamps or something and stamp along these or um, you might have seen the little pot of uh, silver embossing powder you could stamp along this with your sentiments heat emboss it with the silver um, and then you would get that gorgeous effect that would go along with the foiling that's on this card as well but craft is a really nice color to bring into things I was doing um, another project recently which might have been up or might be coming up after this video or before this video um, I'm getting confused with my timeline of videos but um, it, sometime around here you might have seen it or will see it um, and I mixed in colours and glitter and stuff with some craft card and I really loved the way it turned out I always forget to use craft card so um, yeah really nice to have it on brown craft card because it's different to the one that you can actually buy in the A4 pads so we've got five sheets of that as well so you get uh, four different patterns you get the hollow waves the lunar silver the silver screen and the silver strokes oh you get six of each do you yeah six of each not five of each sorry you get six of each in here so um Basically, if you if you cut these apart and stuck them back together in an A4 format, you're basically getting two sheets of each in A4 um, because you know six by twelve, and then you cut this one three by twelve. That would be that would even be bigger than our A4. So yeah, so basically you're getting two A4 sheets of each of them, but it's cut up into six by sixes if that makes any sense. So it's a really good um, value basically and it's lovely that we get these in the kit um, every now and then. So silver service, uh, six by six card pad. Then let's show you the exclusive thing first. I'm pretty sure this is exclusive because I love tonic confetti and I've never seen these ones before so I'm pretty sure they're an exclusive to the kit. So these are called lilac bloom and they are the gorgeous little um, flower shape which I really love I love their flower ones and the circles as well they're always my favorite and um, but these have a beautiful lilac color to them but they also have that AB kind of finish on them so they're kind of reflecting a little bit of um, green and pink at different angles but they're that beautiful purple color and lilac bloom is just gorgeous as well and um, I was using these with another product that's um, I'll show you in a second but these ones don't seem to be as heat stable as normal they were actually shriveling up when I heated them but um, it still gave a cool effect so um, just be a little bit wary if you do like to use them in uh, mixed media kind of applications they don't seem to be quite as heat stable as some of the other uh, Nouveau confettis I'm not sure why it could be the finish on them perhaps I don't I don't think I often put um, things with an AB finish into things like that so yeah it could be the finish on them but anyway I just thought I'd mention that as I found it out when I was doing one of my cards so those are the lilac bloom confetti and it's a 25 mil pot which is the smaller size of pot so if you've ever bought the four packs that they come in it's that size of pot and it's the plastic ones that they're coming in now as well well they have been for ages but yeah they're the plastic ones that they come in so I really really love these I made two shaker cards and I was trying to be frugal with them and I've, I've still managed to keep quite a few of these because if they're an exclusive colour they're also my favourite colour so uh, I don't want to use them up too quickly so I've been a bit frugal in my shaker cards with them so that is the gorgeous lilac bloom then uh, let's show you the these two products so we've got two mini mousses um, in this month's kit we often usually get, only get one so it's really nice to have two because you've got two to try then and these could be ones that you've not tried before then they're not the chalk ones so they're not the newest in the range but previous to the chalk ones crackle and expanding were the two newest before that if that makes sense as well um, so we have got the mini little crackle mousse which is in the water nymph colour which I think is one of my favourites of the crackle mousse colours actually and then the mini expanding mousse is in the misted mauve uh, which I can't remember if this was an exclusive colour at some point I feel like you had to buy it in the bundle to get it or maybe it came out in one of the craft kits before so you might not have this colour this is the misted mauve it's a really beautiful light lilac-y purple colour um, I didn't actually open my small pots I went for my big pots again because I already had these open so I'll show you the colours in the big pots so that is the gorgeous misted mauve really gorgeous colour really pretty 
and the expanding mousse is the one that you can apply heat to which is what I was sprinkling the confetti into and then heating um, and it puffs up and creates a really cool expanded effect um, and if you spread it really thinly and then heat it you kind of get like a faux suede sort of look because it just loses that pearlescent finish but puffs up a tiny little bit but if you use it in a thicker application it really puffs up um, to give a really nice textured kind of effect which I'll show you on the card that I did um, later on as well I'm sure I've shown I think I did a video on expanding mousse and I'm sure I've shown um, different ideas with it um, in past videos as well so you might have already seen this before but if not it's a really fun mousse to play with and if you don't like the expanding effect of it all you have to do is just use it and let it dry naturally and don't apply um, a heat tool to it and then you will just get the kind of normal effect of an everyday embellishment mousse as well but just in this beautiful purple colour so there's also that uh, possibility for using it as well and then the other one was the little water nymph crackle mousse and I'll show you my big pot again Look at that beautiful colour, really pretty. That's actually coming across slightly more green on my camera than it is in real life. It is, it is more of a bluey turquoise than the minty kind of colour it's coming across on the camera. I don't know if it, will it come across the same when it's crackled? Yeah, it comes across the same. It is slightly bluer though, but that's the kind of effect you can get with a crackle mousse. So really, really lovely. This was kind of slightly thicker application, especially up there. So if you apply it thicker, you get um, kind of deeper cracks where it's moved apart more and you get larger sort of areas in between the cracks. And then if, you, if it's slightly more thinly spread out, you kind of get more of a crazing kind of look to it with really sort of tiny cracks. Um, you know with little pieces in between all of the cracks so um, you can definitely get different effects with your crackle mousse as well depending how thickly or thinly you apply it and with a crackle mousse you don't want to heat this you want to leave it to dry naturally and when you are leaving it to dry you want it to um, have a nice airflow around it so Actually what I did last night when I left that piece for that card to dry, um, I've got my pot of aquaflows in front of me and I left it to dry on top of there because there's space between the aquaflows um, because they're just like pens in a pot basically. Um, the air can circulate underneath the piece of card so it's helping it to dry better because the bottom of the card is also drying as well as the actual product on the top of the card. Um, if you have ever found in the past that when you've had your crackle mousse and you've let it dry it starts flaking off it'll be because the card hasn't properly dried you do need to make sure it's nice and dry because if you think about it if the card is still wet because it hasn't sort of the air hasn't circulated underneath it the crackle mousse will kind of have bonded to the top layer of the cardstock but if the rest of the layers in the card are still um you know got moisture in them it's likely that the top layer can peel off so if you then play with the card and move it around and stuff um, bits of it can flake off because the fibres of the card are kind of weakened because of the moisture that's in there I hope that makes sense um, but I, that's how I have found the best way to do it is you can even as well if you haven't got sort of like a pot of pens that you could balance it on just take your two little crackle mousse pots and then as your card is drying put it on there so that the air can at least get underneath parts of it as well and even like if you've left it a couple of hours in the evening you can sort of come back and turn it a different way so the air's still getting under the rest of it as well um, and that does give the perfect effect this was curved when it had dried but if you take your piece of card and you just gently sort of curve it back the other way really gently don't don't like go like that because then all the bits will flick off of it but gently sort of um encourage it to be flatter then you can achieve this gorgeous effect and none of the bits will fall off you just got to be a little bit um patient with it i suppose and wait for it to make sure it's completely dry and i do find overnight um it is pretty much you know perfect to then finish it off onto a card i think i did this about nine o'clock last night and i finished these cards off about 10 or 11 o'clock this morning so um you know that's about 12 13 hours to dry um yeah 14 hours maybe but anyway leaving it a good amount of time to dry you shouldn't get any of the bits flaking off but i've given you a sneaky peek of that card now um anyway those are the two mousses that we're getting in this month's kit so a mini crackle mousse and a mini expanding mousse 
Then we're also getting a mini pot of embossing powder. This is their classic silver colour and it goes really nicely with this um, kit because you've got that gorgeous 6x6 pad of the silver in there as well. Um, and as I said, I think it'll go really nicely with that foiling on the last sheet in the pad to the um, silver strokes, but it's on uh, brown craft card instead of the grey craft card. So really lovely that one. Then uh, we've got a mica mist as well and this is the gorgeous pink carnation which was one of the original colours of the mica mist so it is available in a larger bottle if you would like to get more after you've tried this one. And when you're using your mica mist just make sure you really shake it up nicely before you go to spray it so that everything is nicely dispersed in there and you're not like sucking up a, a lump of mica up the uptake tube and you can also um, wash out the uptake tube as well you just take the whole top off the bottle put this in a little pot of clean water and keep spraying it until just clean water comes through and that will help keep it nice and clean um, and unblocked for the next time you want to use it as well but I love getting these little mini ones because it gives you a chance to try them out and see if you like them uh, you know if you like the finish that they give I mean it's it's kind of um a subtle finish this one especially it's a very nice subtle color so it doesn't overpower a background or um really obliterate any stamping that you might have done in the background before you add this so it's a really pretty color um and a really nice one to try as well so that is the pink carnation so you've got that too and then you also have a full-sized nouveau uh, vintage drop as well and this color is absolutely beautiful it's called peppermint candy i love this color um and i was actually you know I said I made some shaker cards, I wanted to experiment with a Nouveau drop and I thought the vintage would actually work really well so it, it came along at the right point to have a vintage drop in this kit because I wanted to try this idea um, because the vintage drops actually dry with a satin matte kind of finish after 48 hours they'll give you a satin matte kind of finish um, so the idea that I had with this is I wanted some extra confetti to go in my shaker cards because we have got this confetti that comes in the kit but I wanted something extra as well to bring in that beautiful turquoise colour so what I did first of all I did this and that did not work very well at all what I wanted to do was take Nouveau drops and basically like flatten them into like little discs because I think you can buy sort of clay confetti that looks like that but obviously I wanted to try and make my own um However, this did not work. This this version of it was making loads of little Nouveau drops all over a piece of, you know, backing paper from some um, double-sided tape. Um, and then I thought, well, if I put another piece on top, I'm going to stop anything sticking. And the pressure of putting, like, um, a pot of pencils or um, a die-cutting plate on top of it will sort of squish the drops down. But if you do it when they're wet, this is what happens. And you just end up with this, like, blobby mess. I do think I might be able to use it, though, because I was trying to peel it off. And it just kind of gives, like, a cool watery kind of finish, maybe, with this colour scheme. Um, so this kind of was a fail. But um, the method was going to work I just had to do it in a different way so basically you take um, your backing paper it could be off a double-sided adhesive sheet it can be off like a large um, wide roll of double-sided tape um, maybe even double-sided foam sheets as well you can get that kind of thing too or sticky back um, funky foam or um, a sticky back magnetic sheet or something just that sort of slick surface that comes off the back of products like that keep, always keep those pieces because you never know when they're going to come in handy but for this you take a piece of that you do a load of the Nouveau drops all over it you can do different sizes as well um, and space them out as you would if you were pre-making your Nouveau drops so they're not going to be too close together but then don't squish something on top of it straight away because you end up with this but leave them to dry um, the first attempt I did, they weren't quite what I was going for, and I think I'd left that to dry for about an hour before squashing them. But the the second attempt worked perfectly, and that was leaving them to dry for about three hours, mainly because I forgot about them, but leaving it to dry for three hours. Then you take another piece of this non-sticky kind of paper, and you put it on top of it. And then what I did was I put both of my cutting plates on top of it from my tangerine, and then I stood the tangerine on top of it as well, and it flattened them and gave me these little pieces so these were the ones from the second round 
and it gave me the perfect little squashed Nouveau drop which is exactly what I was going for because I wanted them to be like little um, shaker confetti. So that was doing Nouveau drops onto the non-stick sheet, putting, uh, leaving them to dry for three hours, then putting another non-stick sheet on top and then putting my cutting plates on the top of that and then leaving my tangerine on top of it as well and then leaving that overnight and coming back to them and then they looked like this. So one side is slightly more flat than the other and then this side has the nice little bevel on it but when they're in a shaker card you don't really notice the difference between them and the previous attempt where I'd only left them to dry for like an hour or so and then squish them which I don't understand the logic of that maybe I just didn't put anything heavy enough to um to squash them maybe if I'd put my tangerine on the first lot they would have um squashed enough but this was the first attempt these two are from the first attempt and they're more of an actual nouveau drop with a dome on whereas these ones really got nicely flattened so that was what I was going for so if you want to recreate that hopefully those steps um will help you to do that so once they were dry, I flipped them over so that, um, you know, they'd be completely dry on both sides of them because I'd removed my tangerine and sort of taken the top layer off and then left them for a little bit. So I flipped them all over so the bottom side um, had enough time to properly air dry. And then I put them onto a piece of vellum because I thought they were least likely to sort of stick on a piece of vellum and then I took some of my anti-static powder that you might already use in your shaker cards to help your little bits and pieces move around or you might use it with your heat embossing um, but I put some of that powder on them so that any sort of leftover stickiness that they might have um, would be eliminated so now they don't stick to each other and they work as like the perfect little shaker confetti so I thought that was quite a cool idea um, <clears throat> of an extra way to kind of create some extra sort of confetti in a different colour that would also go really nicely in any shakers that you might want to make with this kit and I will point that out again later when I show you my cards I'll show you the little discs shaking around in there as well um, and I was obviously using the vintage drop because that's what comes in this kit but I obviously you could use you could do this with any of the vintage drop colours however um, I probably need to try it out with the normal drops, the metallic drops, the jewel drops, the stone drops, the dream drops and the aroma drops to test it out. But I, I have a feeling maybe because they're a glossier finish they might not work as well or if you're putting the anti-static powder on them to stop them from sticking together um, it might be more noticeable because they're like a glossy sort of finish rather than this sort of satin matte finish so it might work with them but I haven't tried I've only tried with the vintage drops but I thought this was another extra cool idea to show you um because I like to show you different things I don't want to keep repeating the same things that I've already told you before so hopefully that's like an extra way that you might want to try out using your your vintage drop whether it's for cards with this or whether it's for other cards that you want to try um, and if you're good with your drops actually I don't know if it would work when squashing them though but if but if you're good at drawing designs with them you could try and draw like little hearts with them and see if you get that to squash as well and make some little heart confettis too so um, yeah definitely a fun drop to play with the vintage drops so that's um, you're also getting that in the kit now let's have a look at the rest of the or the A4 papers that we're getting and then have a look at the stamps and dies that we're getting in here as well. So cardstock wise I've got my list of names here so I can tell you. Um, we have got three sheets of their textured cardstock which has the linen texture on one side and then the sort of flat smooth on the other side and we're getting these in ivory white, bubblegum pink and sugared lilac which is this beautiful purple colour. I'm pretty sure this came out in the sweet sorbet colour trend which I think was at the beginning of this year but time's going so weird and quickly it could have been two years ago but I think it was the beginning of this year that the sweet sorbet came out um, and I'm pretty sure this lovely sugared lilac is from there, that purple colour of cardstock. So we've got those three gorgeous textured cardstocks. Then we have got a sheet of their satin mirror card which is called Soft Amethyst. I'm pretty sure this was in the Sweet Sorbet colour trend as well but it's a beautiful one this. I love their satin mirror card. I've shown in the past the techniques where you can like um, stamp onto this with your clear mark ink pad and then let it dry or you can um, a clear heat emboss onto it although it does kind of change the finish of the card a little bit but it's worth experimenting with this kind of card to see what's different um, effects that you can get with it. 
Then we're also getting one sheet of their Blue Frost uh, Pearlescent card, which has that gorgeous pearl finish on both sides of the cardstock. And you don't forget, you also have the silver pearl cardstock in the 6x6 pad as well, so you've got two different pearl ones to play with. Then we're also getting a sheet of their specialty cotton handmade paper in pink champagne and I think this originally came out in a blue tone, a deep blue, because it really does remind me of a rough sea when I see that texture but it could also be like um, coral or some kind of um, underwater plant that grows or something. I don't know, it's a... It's a a different sort of one. Actually, some of those bits look a bit like parts of fingerprints. They look like loops and whirls and stuff on fingerprints. So, um, yeah, different kind of cotton handmade paper that could be used for lots of different bits and pieces. Um, I didn't actually use this one. I just realised as I'm showing you these, I don't think I used any of this one. There's Well, there's a couple of cardstocks I didn't use any of because we had so many to choose from. Um, and I've only made five cards. So, you know, there's lots of choice, basically, when you're making your cards out of this kit, which is lovely. The next sheet of cardstock, I think this one has to be one of my top 10 Craft Perfect cardstocks as well. This one is the Miami Mint, and I'm pretty sure this one came out in the Sweet Sorbet colour trend too. But it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a luxury embossed cardstock. I'm pretty sure there is one that's a bronzy version, and it's called Bronze Labyrinth, uh, with this same design on. And that is also one of my favourites as well. So it could possibly be the design, but I do really love this colour as well. So really, really pretty, that Miami Mint. Then we've also got one sheet of their um, glitter card. So not only do we have the six sheets of the silver glitter card in the 6x6 pad, we've also got one full sheet of the um, sugar crystal glitter card, which is their gorgeous like white version with that little AB kind of finish on it. And if you bought the coffee collection um, showcase that came out a few months back, um, I remember telling you in that video how I cut the sugar cubes out of the sugar crystal cardstock. So if you bought that set and you don't have any of that cardstock, you'd get a sheet if you got this kit as well. Um, so really lovely for anything sugary looking too. Then um, I think this is actually going to be like um, a proper running product that's in all of the craft kits now. Because we've seemed to have had two sheets of a patterned paper in like the last three or four um, of the kits so I think this is going to be like a, a reoccurring kind of item which is really nice so they've um, specifically designed a couple of patterned papers that work perfectly with the colours and um, style of this kit as well so you've got two sheets and they are double sided so you get two sheets of the same but you so you could use two of the same if you wanted to or you can use one of each for your projects, whatever pattern you prefer really. I love this one though. This is like a lovely um, light minty tone with darker minty hearts on there. And you've got the larger and the smaller in kind of like a gridded sort of design on there. And then on the back of the paper, you've got this beautiful floral design, which is kind of like a hand-drawn flower because they're very like wonky, which is a really nice um, different sort of style. And all the sizes are actually, uh, they look like they're different flowers as well. and if you can see really close in on that, there's actually teeny tiny little aqua coloured flowers in there as well. So they really have designed them to go perfectly with the kit because if you combined this pattern paper with the other side of the paper or either of these two specialty ones, you're going to tie in that tiny little aqua flower that is in there. I don't, if you, don't know if you can even see it from that far away, but if I do it close up, you can see that little flower, but it is really tiny. Like, probably two millimetres, that little turquoise minty flower. So, really lovely, subtle, just addition of that colour to really make the pattern paper go with everything. I love it when Tonic do stuff like that. Um, it's like that attention to detail works really nicely. So those are all the papers that we're getting. So we've got a lot of selection um, of paper and cardstock and stuff in this month's kit, which is really nice because, um, as I was saying earlier, the dies, I'll show you in a second, are kind of like, almost like a one-cut card. So they're really sort of quick and simple to do and having all these beautiful papers to pick from uh, makes that even easier and everything coordinates really nicely together which is lovely. So, so now we've got our stamps and dies to look at. So I've put mine on a magnetic sheet um, just because the tonic ones fit perfectly in these folders. It's quite nice to have them on the magnetic sheet because you know nothing's going to fall out then. Um, but yours will actually come on two acetate sheets um, and you could either keep them on that or put them onto either a tonic magnetic sheet or um, 
I often buy the cheap kind of A4 ones off of eBay or Amazon and just cut them in half and then they fit perfectly in the folders as well. You will also be getting your sticker, uh, but I haven't actually got one to show you, but I presume it will say Sweetheart Bouquet on it um, and, you know, we'll probably have beautiful colours to match the colour theme of the kit as well. Um, and so, this is the die set for this month's kit, which is the Sweetheart Bouquet. Um, and I don't know if some of you have been around for a long time, you might be thinking this kind of concept of having like the two card fronts is familiar. And I went back and found the kit number. Um, so kit number 34, which was quite a while ago, if you think about we're on 51 now, um, was the Art Deco frame. And I'm pretty certain that had two um, A2 like card front designs in it, but they were much more masculine. They were very angular being sort of that Art Deco style. And I think I also said one of them was sort of reminding me of something off a spaceship or something as well. Um, so if you got that one, this is a nice sort of more feminine version. Um, you know, if you enjoyed using that one, this is a nice more curvy floral version of that kind of a die set which is nice and I'm pretty sure the other one had two outside edges um, that were just straight edges I think maybe one had a pierced design or something um, but this one has got a scalloped edge as well so if you did have that kit you can mix and match across them too and there has been a few other online launches such as Stamp Club possibly yeah no it was Designer's Choice as well um, there might have been some more too, um, that also had rectangular designs in them that were kind of more in that um, A2 sort of sized format as well. So they would mix and match really nicely with these two. And I'm sure you know uh, what dies you have in your stash that might work with these kind of dies as well. So um, they're a nice versatile kind of set that's going to slot in quite nicely to any of your other tonic bits and pieces that you might have bought, which is nice. Actually... If, if any of you bought the envelope die set, they did one that was the um, Nordic collection. So this was probably like two to three years ago. Um, I think this size would also fit on that kind of an envelope design as well, because I'm pretty sure that was more of like an A2 kind of size as well. So I do think this is a nice versatile set um, that makes perfectly uh, beautiful standalone cards, but you can definitely mix and match it being in this rectangular format. Um, and this sort of section here, it is actually a rectangle, but um, if you had square dies in your stash, you could easily cover this up. You know, just pick a square die that's slightly bigger than this and cover it up and give a different kind of effect. That way, bring in other patterns and bits and pieces as well. So definitely a nice versatile set to work with. Um, so I will actually measure this scalloped outside edge for you because I didn't think to do that before. Um, and I, I don't know if it is slightly bigger. No, it is, it is an A2 kind of size. So this would definitely fit on your A2 cards because if you go from scallop edge to scallop edge, it's basically four and an eighth inches by five and three eighths inches. Or if you like your centimeters, it is 10, uh, 10 centimeters and like four millimeters by 13 centimeters and a about six millimeters so I do think this would fit on an A6 card as well because I'm pretty sure I make my A6 cards about 10.5 so it would just fit on an A6 and you'd have to trim the height of it as well but if you like your A6 cards rather than American sort of A2 style cards um, you should be able to adapt the height of an A6 card blank to fit this on as well or um, you can also do what I do which is take square card blanks and then trim them down and then you know it's definitely going to fit and you can add whatever kind of border around the edge that you would want to um, and I'll show you my cards later to sort of show you how I did that as well. So that is the outside edge that we're getting with this die set and then it's a pretty simple die set. There's not too many dies in here but you've basically got, let me take these central pieces out so I can just show you the main two panels. You will see these cut on my cards as well. I made sure to make a simple card showing you both of the designs cut out. So this is the first one which has a beautiful collection of roses down here. And these flowers are also reminding me of the craft kit that was called like peony something 
and you could cut the flowers into the card or out of the card and they were some beautiful blooms. Um, I'll look up the number of that and put it here as well in case you had that one. I think this would work quite nicely with that. You could have those sort of as focal elements in this top portion as well. Um, so I'll mention that, the kit number down here. Um, but yeah, some beautiful floral designs with lovely leaves and stuff. You've got like these swirls. This is like a, they're both, no, this one is a lovely symmetrical design. This one is more asymmetrical. Um, but it's not 100% symmetrical, but it's more symmetrical than that one. So you've kind of got like the trellis repeated on both sides. You've got the flower in the centre and then, you know, repeated on both sides. So um, it's a really lovely balanced design, this one. And I love having this little bit of trellis in there. Um, you've got a couple of little florals in the corners down here. Uh, you've got the one sort of rose in the centre with lovely um, foliage and vines coming off of it. Extra little flowers here. So any of your little uh, flower dies that you have, small little flowers, you could make them three-dimensional and stick them on top of these. You could bring in your quilled flowers from last month's kit and add like a selection of them around here or even put them over the top of these flowers. Keep the foliage but cover these flowers with your quilled flowers as well. Um, and the great thing about this die is and the other one as well, you can do this with both, they are verso, so they this will just cut into your card and it will leave a solid panel in the centre and it will leave however much space your card has um, around the outside edge, but you, obviously you can use this outside edge to cut it out as well if you want it in that smaller rectangular format. But... Um, Having that solid piece in the middle allows you to stamp any of your stamps in there and add some colouring to it. Or you can bring in any other pattern dies that might fit in there. Maybe you've got a sentiment die that would fit in there, cutting either into the card or just matting and layering on top of that solid pattern on there as well. You can even use your um, luxury specialty cards and you know make the most of a, a large mat of them on there as well. Whether you use the scalloped small die that will fit inside there or whether you just use your paper paper trimmer to cut a rectangle or square to go inside there as well. There's loads of different options um, of different ways of doing this as well and they make the perfect shaker cards whether you leave that solid or cut it out like I have on my shaker cards you know you can get lots of different looks um, from doing that as well. And then the other design here this one looks a lot more um, intricate there's like less spaces left within this top portion in particular you can see here there's lots of nice spaces so it works really nicely for a shaker card especially if you're having this bit solid you can still see the bit shaking around here this one is slightly more intricate but i have made it into a shaker card and i left this panel open so although you might not see the shaker stuff around the edges so much you can see it when it shakes into the middle and um, this one also has a beautiful trellis design down here and some lovely more like side views of flowers, um, again with some foliage, those little small flowers again cropping up, um, and there's all sorts of flowers around the sides, more swirly designs, another flower, there's almost like hearts hidden in there as well, which probably um, gave it the name Sweetheart Bouquet, um, so there's loads of different elements hiding in here, and you'll see it cut out in a second as well, but this one's more sort of asymmetrical, the flowers are more off on this side, um, rather than going over to this side. So again, if you wanted to add in your quilled flowers, you could sort of add them over the top of these three florals that are here as well to build up your design. And as I said, you can cut either of those out with the large scalloped um, sort of A2 sized die, or you can just use your paper trimmer to cut them out as well and leave whatever sized border you want on here, or you can combine them with other dies that you might have um, in this kind of ratio of uh, a rectangle or even you can um, trim out different bits and pieces from these um, and use them in different places and I just realised I was going to do that on one of my cards and then as I was putting it together this morning I totally forgot um, so I will show you that idea uh, when we come to that card as well because I just realised that um, but yeah you could also actually cut a larger rectangle if you like making larger cards cut a larger rectangle and then use this as an aperture and then add that over the top of the delicate detail as well so really are loads of different ways of using these ones um, to go along with the outside scalloped rectangle you have a scalloped rectangle to go on the interior as well and it is just slightly rectangular so if I put it like like this you can see it's not much in it um, of it being off square kind of shape but there's nothing to stop you putting it in this way round especially if you um, matted this onto one of the like luxury card stocks and then trimmed it out with like uh, I don't know 
seven or eight millimeter border around the edge of each of it you would cover up the rest of this portion and just have like um a more of a portrait rectangle on there as well but it's not very rectangular it's only a teeny bit off being square so um you could definitely use larger square dies from your set or from your stash and um put a square topper on there as well or even just bring out toppers from a paper pad or something that you have and they're often in like a square format you could cut them down to size with this die or you could just keep them in their square format and put them over the top and just hide some of the edges of this area as well so lots of different um ways of adding other stuff onto here and there's nothing to stop you turning that into a circle as well there's nothing to stop you putting a circle over the top of there so a nice versatile kind of um, set but if you want this to be completely full of detail rather than adding like a topper on top or making it into a shaker card you do actually have a perfect panel to go inside here and this one actually says um, thinking of you in there as well so it's got like uh, almost a circular sort of design going on and then it says thinking of you right in the centre with loads of little vines and stuff coming out and I'll show you that one cut out as well so you don't have to sort of figure it out from being backwards um, and then you also have more variations on um, what you could put inside here if you want to so you could use like this rectangle to matte layer a pretty um, luxury paper onto here and then you've also got a smaller rectangle which is actually the exact same width as the larger one so you could actually lock this in so when you've cut it it will actually slot into the um, scallops on either side which is really nice um, and then to go inside that you have a sentiment die that says love and hugs and there's two little hearts in there as well which are really nice to paper piece back in and you've got a gorgeous curly ampersand in the center as well and that fits perfectly inside that smaller scalloped rectangle and then you also have these extra little dies so you've got this one that is kind of like um, the bottom of a circle coming around here and it's got a couple of flowers in it and then this has almost got that bottom of a circle in it as well um, with some sort of foliage in there as well and I mean I'm presuming this might follow on from some of the pattern, maybe? No, I don't know if it does, actually. But maybe... I suppose it just gives you that circular feeling that you get in the, the sentiment as well. Or maybe if you um, fill this up with them... Oh yeah, that's that's probably what it's meant to be for. Obviously you could use the same one top and bottom, but if you put them either side of the other sentiment, you're getting that sort of circular feel that you get in this one as well, uh, which is really nice. So you can either do the two different ones or you could do the foliage and then more foliage at the top as well if you want to or vice versa. Um, and then I'm sure you could obviously mix and match these together uh, just to like not even use the outside of the, um, the die set as well. I'm sure you could bring in like these pieces um, and just bring this all the way down a card creating a different kind of intricate design as well with these smaller little panels or even adding um you know thinking of you and then love and hugs as well and then bringing like another decorative one underneath that to make a longer kind of strip for your card too so don't just think you have to stick to um this main panel but you then because you have this scalloped one the great thing about a scalloped um, rectangle is it's very easy to resize it either make it bigger like make an aperture bigger with it which is what I've done on one of my cards or make it smaller because it's got the scallop design it kind of locks itself in so you could actually create a design within here so maybe another decorative one up here and then you space them out a little bit and you put one more of the skinny decorative ones up here and then you could actually use this die to cut the scallop off on this edge as well and then you'd have like a long strip to go down the center of your card or slightly off to one side or something as well and even um being a little bit more complicated for sort of extending this in two directions but you could get away with uh, stacking more of these up maybe even repeating these three up here and turning it into more of like a DL design as well so really 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 nice and versatile this set um, and great for quick easy simple 
sort of one cut almost kind of cards but also great for experimenting with and um, you know thinking up some wacky kind of ideas that you might not have thought of before and also actually a great set for easel cards too and actually there's nothing to stop you uh, using them sideways I was just using them portrait because that's what I just imagined it in my head but there's nothing to stop you using it sideways and uh, I know this oh my goodness I can't pick these up um, I know this isn't sort of like a, a square but there's nothing to stop you mounting it that way and just having a little bit of this solid design um, underneath and then having your thinking of you sentiment going across that way so you can definitely turn these into landscape proportioned cards if you'd rather as well or putting it up this way too I didn't even think of doing that actually as well um, you can put it up this way and have the flowers at the top of the card and then your sentiment at the bottom or a circle over the top of this or a different square over the top of it so there really are so many different ways of turning this simple um, easy card creator kind of die set into more elaborate things as well um, so yeah really really like this die set and then we've got the stamps to go through as well. Put them on the back of the wallet so you can see them. Loads of lovely sentiments in here and a few gorgeous little decorative details that I've used. Um, I've used quite a few of them. I didn't use these ones, but the rest I've used um, on my cards to like build up a pattern in the background as well. So you've got thank you. I always love having a thank you stamp. I love it when they put one in a set. Just thank you and happy birthday. They don't have a happy birthday in here, but those kind of sentiments always... They're just the cards that I make all the time. Um, and then you've got like sub sentiments to go with some of them as well. Um, so you've got thank you and then you can do so very much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, missing you. Always in my thoughts. Just to say you are very special. Or you can do um, you are someone and then you could just use the special off of there. Uh, you could do very special friend. Um all sorts of different ways you can mix and match and you've got best wishes in a nice little sort of label shape as well and then the gorgeous extra kind of pretty stamps in there is this beautiful one I really like that and it's really easy to repeat um, and line up and build like a whole sort of uh, border design with it with the gorgeous little roses in the center which go really nicely with the rose design die but there's also a little rose stamp in there as well which um, looks really lovely and I was combining it with the little leaves that you get in there too then there's also two little hearts together um, this gorgeous like stylized little flower which kind of goes along nicely with the patterned paper you might even be able to stamp that over the top of the pattern on the pattern paper actually I'm not sure um, and then you have three more designs, a little corner here with those gorgeous sort of um, almost petunia kind of flowers, little sort of cup flower and tiny little daisy type flowers as well, um, another different version of that sort of thing and then another one with like the floral motif in the centre and the little bars coming out to the sides as well. I'm not sure if that is just my stamp or whether that does actually have, no, that is supposed to be solid, that um line there is supposed to be solid it's just the printing on my stamp has put little um bits missing from it but all of them are supposed to be solid so a uh, really lovely little stamp set to go along with that as well so I'll put all this away and I'll come back in a second to show you my samples and I apologize for this being such a long video <laughs> Okay, so my first two cards to show you are the ones that are in my sped up video and I decided to do two different shakers. You might be thinking they look exactly the same as a shaker, Do you've just used the different panels, but I wanted to show you um, like how easy the gorgeous tonic shaker creator pouches make it to create a full fronted, well almost full fronted um, shaker card with like a gorgeous decorative panel on top of it. So this one... I ended up shadowing it with a white underneath and then the gorgeous um, amethyst kind of card on top because I wanted to add foam tape behind this scallop but it's just slightly too small to add foam tape behind so I cut a rectangle that's a teeny bit bigger just to make it easier to add the foam tape behind. You can hardly even see it, it's literally just poking out here but it's because this scallops inwards, I would have had to cut a really skinny piece of foam tape to go behind there. But just having that little extra mat of the white underneath um, allowed me to cut my foam tape probably double the width that I would have had to have done 
um, if I had just used a scallop so it makes it a little bit easier um, but it was still fiddly to do this kind of a shaker card so I wanted to show you the one that you can create with the tonic shaker creator pocket pouch things um, you can tell I like this one because that's my last one um, in this packet but you basically cut your backing piece of cardstock to size um, to fit it inside the score lines of this. Um, so you've got the score lines around here. And then you make sure that the tape, because you can feel where the tape is stuck on here, you make sure that the tape is pointing upwards and then you fold it around the back and then you take the sticky off and stick it to the back of the cardstock. And I do that for three sides, leave the top one open, then put my shaker stuff in and then close it. And then you can add your beautiful die cuts on top of it. Um, and it just just makes it so much easier this was so quick to create this full fronted shaker card and you can't really tell much of a difference between the two of them but this one probably took two to three times as long because of cutting the skinny bits of foam tape around the edges so I don't know if you can you see it's a really skinny bit of foam tape whereas this it's just that pocket right up to the edge so you don't see any foam tape or anything and it's actually flatter because it's a pocket this is actually flatter than doing it with a 3d foam so for posting um, it's a lot better as well you could definitely do this just with a, a second class or first class stamp so I just wanted to show you that ease and like the difference of making the two cards so that's what my sped up video will be we'll be making these two um, and I've also done little bits of difference by like using the luxury embossed card on this one and you can still see the detail which I love with their cardstock you can't obviously tell the exact pattern of it but you still get that lovely little bit of um, detail within the die cut design which I think is really lovely um, and then I used the textured craft perfect in the background and you'll see in there those are my squished Nouveau drop confetti kind of pieces along with the little flowers they just work so perfectly and you can see they're all moving around really nicely they're not getting stuck anywhere because I put that anti-static on them they've not all clumped together and got stuck together they're moving around there really nicely I do also put some little microbeads in there as well just to help everything move um, but you can see how nicely all those little Nouveau drops are going in there um, I did the same I put the same stuff in this one as well so you can see all of that moving around. I did less of the Nouveau drops in this one because the background is a turquoise because I used the patterned paper. Uh, but there are a few of them floating around in there with the confetti. Um, and so this one, I cut the detail. This is the rose detail, by the way. Isn't it beautiful? I cut the detail into a white panel of card and then trimmed it with my guillotine, leaving enough space that I knew I could cut foam tape to be that skinny. I could have left it wider as well. It, it didn't have to be as skinny as I cut it. You could definitely leave it wider and use, um, you know, a 5 or 10 or even 12 millimeter um, foam tape around the edge if you'd rather do it that way. And then I cut the purple one um, to go on top. So making it really simple you can just layer the purple one on top once you've made the shaker um, and you don't have to worry about getting the foam tape behind that tiny little scalloped edge to it uh, but I love this design it looks so pretty with those gorgeous flowers in there um, and then this one gives you the up close look of the other design as well that sort of has the asymmetrical sort of flowers clustered in that bottom corner and you can see how this detail is much closer together so here you can see a lot of the shaker stuff through the detail so this one is really great for a shaker card because you, you've got more open areas that you can see through it and it wouldn't matter if this had been solid whereas this one if that had been solid you couldn't really tell what's behind there maybe in this area and a little bit down here but there's not much space here to sort of tell what's shaking in there but leaving the frame open um, you know you can really see all the bits and pieces that are shaking inside so that is my sped up video because I wanted to show the sort of differences and I actually ended up using the rectangles that came out of the opposite ones I swapped them over to do the sentiments and this one I used the long way and you can see how it'll slot back in again and that that smaller rectangle would do the same thing if you had just cut the smaller rectangle as well um, and then this one I used the short end of the rectangle and snipped it off um, and put it in the center like that as well so really simple um, cards and definitely if you use those shaker pockets it makes it so much easier as well so I'll make sure to link those with the kit below the video too 
then I obviously wanted to show you um, how to use some of the gorgeous Nouveau from the kit as well so I did this really really simple one it's literally just a panel of the patterned paper with some heat embossing with the gorgeous silver embossing powder using that lovely rose stamp and you can see here how I've extended it and it extends really nicely you can not really tell the join because of the way of the pattern um, and I've just done it in a few different areas keeping it in like a vertical sort of fashion to go along with the linear kind of effect of the hearts and then I've just done the small little sentiment that says love and hugs and I have paper pieced back in um, the glitter card hearts that fell out of the bottom layer that I shadowed the white one with so really cute that little sentiment and then I've just used some of the vintage drops um, in different areas to accent that as well and I've used some of that Miami mint behind the sentiment too because that minty colour just goes perfectly with the patterned paper then I did this one which is doing my um, encrusted expanding mousse kind of a background and you can see in some of the places how that confetti like wanted to shrivel up a little bit so it's not quite so heat stable as some of the other confettis from Tonic. I, I do think maybe it is that AB finish. Um, I did stick a few extras on there as well. Um, and I also sprinkled in some of the embossing powder. I really love the look of embossing powder onto the expanding mousse and I often use a glittery embossing powder so you get the glitter and that gorgeous metallic-y embossing effect on there as well. But this time I just obviously use the one from the kit and it's a gorgeous just a metallic silver and it works really really nicely in conjunction with that um, expanding mousse in that misted mauve colour. Um, and then obviously the as the expanding mousse expands that kind of confetti sort of sticks into it as well as the embossing powder melting and um, it looks a bit messy around the edges but the way I like to sort of make that a feature of the card is I watered down some of the mousse afterwards and just splattered it on here as well so even though it is an expanding mousse you don't have to heat it and if it's a thinner application you get this kind of faux suede sort of look if it's thicker application you get this sort of bubbled up um, almost I suppose like a leather kind of look really and then you can also um, water it down and use it that way as well and not heat it to get a different effect too and it just looks really lovely and then for the sentiment that is the square sentiment but instead of using the scalloped square that can cut it out I've just used my paper trimmer or I might use my scissors actually I think I used my scissors um, just to trim it into a rectangle and then I have uh, shadowed it with the silver glitter card from the 6x6 pad as well and added a few more little confettis onto the frame there and I think that one looks really lovely. And then the final card, I wanted to show you the Mica Mist in use because I hadn't shown you that yet. Um, so this is a stamped background. I picked two colours out of my stash of Nouveau ink pads. I used the Pink Sherbet and the Lotus Flower inks. I thought they went nicely with the, the colour selection of the kit. And I did the um, always in my thoughts stamp and the two little hearts in the lighter pink colour and then I chose to do the rose and the leaves in the darker pink colour um, just all over the background. Then um, I wanted to cut an aperture in this for a different reason than is sort of shown here because I forgot um, but I wanted to cut an aperture in it so I used that scalloped rectangle square the smaller one cut it once up here and that's what this panel is and then I just uh, shifted the die down and cut it again to make it an elongated kind of aperture in there as well. So you could also do that with the larger scalloped rectangle if you were doing a much larger card and you wanted a bigger sort of aperture in it. You could definitely do it with that one too. But I wanted to show it just with the smaller one because I like making my smaller scale kind of cards. And... Um, and actually before I did that die cutting I had actually sprayed it with the mica mist so I just did a few spritzes all over and you can see how lovely and subtle that mica mist is, the pink carnation really nice subtle colour, doesn't obliterate the stamping too much just gives a lovely bit of pearlescence kind of sheen on there and a little bit of splatter as well um, and then I've cut the aperture out of it and then what I was going to do which I forgot this morning when I was finishing off this card is, let me just get the dies back again I was going to take the rose die 
the one that has that gorgeous cluster of roses on the bottom and I was going to cut this into a piece of card and just use that portion of it and put it behind the aperture so I think that would look absolutely beautiful as well but I totally forgot when I was making this card which is why I put that back because I was like this is going to be a bit empty just having that crackle paste in the background but it's because I totally forgot that I, I wanted to do that but you could definitely put that in there as well maybe even cutting that from the purple um, to bring the purple colour into this card as well or maybe even the white glitter card actually would look really nice over the top of that crackle paste so that's what my original plan was but I guess I've just shown you an extra idea now that you could use um, to create a card with as well uh, so the background of this one is the crackle paste which I was showing you earlier if you do a thinner application you get smaller sort of crazing crackles and if you do a thicker application you get larger chunks and sort of thicker cracks between them as well and I gave you all the tips about it drying earlier too um, and then I've done the same sentiment that I was stamping in the background just in black and mounted it onto some of that Miami mint cardstock because it matches the water nymph crackle mousse and the peppermint candy nouveau drops perfectly all, all of those colors just go absolutely perfectly together um and then i've just finished off with the nouveau drops as well and i really love how that one turned out i think it would have looked really beautiful with the flowers over the top as well but actually just doing it like this really shows off the um the crackle because you can see it in a slightly larger kind of fashion i mean there's you don't need to stick this panel back on over the top i just felt like it was there and why not um put it back on at a jaunty angle but you could definitely leave it so it's just like a whole aperture of the gorgeous crackle mousse with the sentiment in the center as well you could even actually stamp some of the flowers and trim them out and and um you know make like a little wreath around the sentiment or something too so lots of different options for finishing off a card like this but I wanted to do these little extra ones as well just to show you some uses of the gorgeous Nouveau from this kit so you've got the mica mist, you've got the crackle mousse, you've got the expanding mousse you've got the embossing powders used on the expanding mousse or just in a normal fashion you've got the confetti and then you've also got um, your Nouveau drops on here as well and then I also showed you another way of using your Nouveau vintage drops to create confetti to go in a shaker card as well so I hope you enjoyed this unboxing video of Tonic Craft Kit 51, which is the Sweetheart Bouquet. Um, and all of the links for this kit, any of the products that are included that I can link to and those shaker pockets will be listed in the description below the video and also on my blog post as well. Um, and keep your eyes peeled for the sped up video showing you the two uh, shaker cards as well. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video. Bye! <laughs>